All right, welcome back to AP Computer Science Lesson 9. Today we're going to be talking about uh, in object-oriented programming again, and we're, this time we're going to be talking about subclasses, inheritance, and polymorphism. So uh, we're going to talk about classes and subclasses first. So uh, subclasses have the same relationship as sets and subsets in math. So the integers are in the real numbers, right? Uh, Dogs are also animals, so uh, dogs share some properties with all animals despite having uh, attributes of their own. And now inheritance, or having these subclasses, uh, allows for code reusability. So the dog can in class can inherit um, the animal properties by being a subclass of animal. So here's an example, right? We have um, our class animal. Right, and it's going to have uh, weight and num leg as its instance variables, and then we're going to have a method called speak, right, and it's going to say I am an animal to the console. So this is the animal class that the dog will inherit from. So keep this in mind. So now here is our dog class, and we say that uh, this public class dog extends animal. This is how we show uh, inheritance in Java. So we're going to have a, another uh, instance variable called uh, breed, and it's going to be a string, right? And then we're going to uh, modify the speak method, and it's going to say, woof, I'm a dog, instead of the previous um, speak method, which is going to say, I'm an animal. So the dog uh, will be a breed in addition to num legs um, and weight from animal or it will have a breed in addition to those other properties. And then when speak is called, uh, it's going to say, woof, I'm a dog, right? So this is a, what's called a method overriding. This is pretty critical. Uh, it allows us to change the method later on in higher um, levels of this class, right? So uh, polymorphism is a way of sort of uh, having different containers for each of these uh, subclasses, right? So we can create a dog object, right? Um, as dog uh, dog one is equal to new dog, right? And this is going to create a dog object. This is completely normal, just like everything else we've done, right? But another way is that we can use polymorphism to say that we're going to declare an animal called dog two, and we're going to set that equal to a new dog. So this is going to create a dog object, right? We can also go even further and say that um, there's an object called dog3, and that's going to be equal to a new dog, right? Because object is the highest level of abstraction, or I guess it's like the uh, highest level that we can go to, right? So, um, and since dog is an object, we can go ahead and place um, a new dog into an object, right? But if we tried to place a new animal into a dog, uh, that isn't so good, right? That'll throw us an error, right? But we can certainly declare an animal um, as an animal, right? That's because polymorphism holds an is a relationship. So, um, like I said, animal a is equal to new dog is completely valid, right? It's because the variable a is declared um, to point to an animal, right? And since a dog is an animal, uh, we're all good. So, like I said, um, the relationship between a class and its subclass is an is a relationship. This is very critical. So, a dog is an animal. So, polymorphism is useful for storing different types of objects in the same structure, right? So, uh, consider a car dealership storing different types of cars in an array list called lot2. Let's just call it. So let's say that we're going to have our super class um, called car, and it's going to have subclasses of sedan, truck, and SUV. So we're going to go ahead and declare this lot too as a new array list of type car, right? And then we're going to add uh, a new sedan, and we're going to go ahead and call it Honda Civic, whatever. But we can also add uh, a new SUV. So we have these different types of data inside of this lot too, uh, yet they can all be added because they all inherit from type car. 
So that's a simple example of how polymorphism works. So um, we can also have higher levels of abstraction, um, or many levels of inheritance, rather, uh, using multiple inheritance. So we can think about uh, mathematics again and say that the integers are in the set of real numbers, right? But the real numbers are also in the set of complex numbers. So that's one way we can think of uh, multiple inheritance, right? Humans are mammals, certainly we'd all agree with that, but also uh, mammals are animals. So this is um, uh, how we can do this multiple inheritance. So this just means that humans are animals and are mammals. So a human is a mammal is an animal, right? So And Java allows for this type of structure, right? And it follows all the same rules, so the properties are inherited from the soup, from the parent class, so we just have to be mindful uh, of this application, as it uses the same rules. Now keep in mind, this um, Java doesn't allow for you to inherit from multiple different classes, uh, unlike certain languages like C++, which will allow you to um, extend from multiple different classes, but uh, just keep that in mind, and that's inheritance. Thanks for watching.